Uh, and order tests. So the only two tests presently that a nurse practitioner cannot uh, order are MRIs and uh, CT scans. Uh, and these are um, approved actually by the province. They are approved in law, so the regulatory uh, approval is coming and that's expected uh, either this month or next month. It's supposed to be done by 2020, end of 2020. Uh, what this effectively means is that the scope of practice of a nurse practitioner uh, and that of a family doctor is identical. Um, it's not too surprising. Um, people say, well, is there any difference really uh, in the amount of training? This, it's a different style of training. Uh, if you think just the cumulative years of education and training is almost identical. Uh, you'll do your four years uh, of undergrad, right? and then you're going to practice for two, so up to six. Uh, then you're going to do a master's for two more, and then you're going to do your nurse uh, practitioner diploma for another one or two. So you're coming out uh, as a nurse practitioner after 10 years uh, of education and practice. Your family physician, similarly, four years for an undergrad, uh, then you're going to have four years for your actual uh, medical program, and then you'll have one or two years for your residency. So again, it comes out uh, nine to 10 years in both cases of uh, training, just two different ways to get to the same outcome. Uh, so admissions, how, how do you start this process, right? Um, there are three sites that we have at the University of Ottawa. Uh, there's the actual main campus site, uh, Woodruff, which is uh, the same program, but housed within uh, Algonquin, uh, and then Pembroke. Um, these, I mean, right now with many things being online, but not sort of our clinical courses and not um, the actual practica in many cases, uh, this really would have been historically and what we'll move back to after COVID is that people might sit within their designated sites. Um, there are slight differences in the admission averages between the three. It is not something that's set. This is just the historical average uh, for the previous year of admission, uh, which is based on what is the average of the people who applied. So uh, it's just that there were uh, higher mark applications to the University of Ottawa main campus site uh, compared to the Algonquin site. The prerequisites um, from high school in Ontario, that's what's listed here. You have the English for you or French for you, biology for you and a chemistry for you with a minimum of 65% required in that course. And then one of uh, the functions 3M, functions 3U or mathematics uh, for you. Uh, also uh, of importance, there are prerequisite skills and these are dictated by the College of Nurses of Ontario. Um, requisite skills in relation to uh, hearing, seeing, and sort of ability for movement. Uh, and this relates to the College of Nurses of Ontario, which is the, the fundamental regulatory body that says that nurses have to be able to uh, perform certain physical skills uh, just as part of providing care to patients. Uh, there's also risk management requirements for the university, and this is really immunization, uh, CPR, uh, level C, uh, and a few other items um, such as um, a criminal record check uh, that needs to be done before uh, you're able to actually uh, come in and see patients. So that's the admissions. The courses themselves, once you're in the university, um, really go over the four years. And the black and red uh, are there to denote whether it's a theoretical, uh, so a classroom or laboratory um, course, or one in which you are doing the actual clinical practice. So as you can see, it's, it's effectively a switch from 100% in the classroom in the first semester to almost 100% in the clinical setting by the end of the fourth year. Uh, and the beginning, the first year is more or less sort of a training, a fundamental basic knowledge that you have to have anatomy, physiology, uh, determinants of health, um, ethical issues, moving into the start of second year for your health assessments and pathophysiology, and then starting your clinical and really moving through doing more and more of it. Then you can also see in the third year, the, the fall semester, for example, there's always a coupling of you have your medical surgical uh, theoretical class and you have your medical surgical practicum. Right, so you, what you're learning in the classroom, there is simultaneously the actual clinical course occurring. And you can see that for mental health psychiatry uh, occurring at the same time. And the second one, medical, surgical, child and maternity, both in the classroom and the clinical uh, occurring at the same time. When you get into the last semester, so winter of fourth year, uh, this is referred to as consolidation. And I've spaced it out into three, although it's actually only a single course. But it's just because each time you see where I have the asterisk, it's 117 or so hours that you have to do clinically to pass that. Now, the consolidation is actually the combination uh, of that. So right, you're going to have 350 or so hours that you need to actually do. And um, that is really the entire term. So what occurs there is whereas in the third year fall, you'll be in the smaller groups, six, seven, eight uh, students 
to a preceptor. Uh, and actually in a clinical setting, by the time you get into consolidation, it is one student with one preceptor uh, and you work their shift from January through to the end of March, which is really the, the 350 hours that you need to complete. So the basis to this is and some people are always very interested to say they wanted to get into clinical right at the outset and start seeing patients. Um, seeing patients in and of themselves will not be of any utility to a student um, if there's no foundation or fundamental knowledge there. So what the goal here is, as you need to have some knowledge to understand what is uh, actually being said, what's being discussed in the clinical setting to maximize those hours. All programs uh, across the province uh, really have a, a set and similar number of hours that we do uh, without much variation between any of them. Here we have just decided to prioritize them to let's once you have the foundational basic knowledge um, that you need to go into a clinical setting and see patients and be safe and effective um, and really efficacious as you provide care, uh, let, let's prioritize it so you can get the most out of it when you already have the knowledge. Um, so University of Ottawa, you've decided you want to do it, you're looking for different programs, uh, top rank program and uh, top three programs in Ontario. Uh, there's also um, the percentage of people from the programs who pass the actual licensure exam to become a nurse, uh, and the University of Ottawa actually has one of the highest passing rates on the board exam. Um, these are all publicly available. Uh, internationally renowned faculty, um, all of our faculty as well are registered nurses, um, with me being a nurse practitioner as well. Uh, Well-designed curriculum, as I said, it's not just sort of um, a piecemeal or patchwork uh, of courses. There is intention and design that goes into it to say, how do we actually get people to get the most out of it, learn the most, and then, right, unsurprisingly, have very high passing rates on the board exam. Uh, we also have the ability to study in French and English and in um, a French immersion option for those who are in English so that certain courses are actually taken in French. Uh, and the university itself, uh, top three in Ontario, top seven in Canada, uh, top 150 in the world, uh, with only 15 universities actually across the country uh, making it on that. With there being close to a thousand universities, um, or over a thousand universities, right, sort of on these lists, um, that really is uh, up quite high. So um, that's really just the quick synopsis I have. Um, and I'm really happy to take questions on it, if I can figure out how to get myself to the chat. Uh, here we go, here's the chat, and there we go. 